and welcome to another Tech Talk Travel interview. We're sitting here in lovely Barcelona with Michael Kessler, who is the CEO of Review Pro. Michael, it's great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, absolutely. Michael, I'd like to start with your background a little bit. Can you talk uh, talk us through your yeah. your career path so far uh, up until where you are today? Okay. Well, good question. So I'm German, yeah, to, to start with, um, and I, you know, in my academic career I studied um, computer science and economics. In, in Heidelberg and also during my studies I've all been very like entrepreneurial so I started my own businesses while I was a student and um, um, was an uh, was a software business as well mm -hmm. yeah so we were doing IT we were you know also selling software and it brought me into lots of uh, different organizations um, from there on you know working with um, different uh, technologies Eventually, companies. My company was acquired in 2002. Mm -hmm. you now, which then brought me ultimately back to Barcelona. Yeah, which I'm here for the last uh, 13 years. Yeah, and it must have been hard for you. Yeah, it was <laughs> was terrible. You know, it was you know, the weather was so good, and yeah. and you know, um, and this is home now. Barcelona is home. Yeah. Um, I'm living here. I have my family here. I have two lovely kids here. Lovely. Um, love it. It's great. Um, Work for an amazing company, Review Pro. Yeah, and we've um, we've um, started. I've worked for a company for about ten years now, almost going ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, started as a, as a VP of Sales, and then you know moved up. And since um, beginning of last year, I um, after the acquisition of Shichi as well in 2017, um, became the CEO at uh, Review Pro. Right. Yeah. We're, we're going to come to that. I'm going to ask you about that that transition for you. But before we do, could you give mm. us a little bit about Review Pro Review Pro's history and global footprint today, mm. and sure. also how when when you became a Shichi company, mm. uh, what role did that play in your products and culture overall? Right. So about the footprint, Review Pro. You know, we started more than 10 years ago and we have we have clients out of all different segments pretty much in more than 150 countries today so we work with all types of accommodation providers uh, destinations so everybody within the hospitality industry that is looking for user generated content and its analytics yeah there has been a time we called ourselves a big data company. You know, mm -hmm. everybody was using that term. I think today we don't use it so much anymore. At least I can't see it. Yeah, it's probably um, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> has been used a lot. Yes, yeah. that's true in various different ways. So, um, and we provide what we call guest intelligence solutions. Yeah, and our main clientele is accommodation providers, so hotels, service apartments, um, and. Um, we provide what we call online reputation management uh, a solution. We provide a survey product and we provide a workflow product. And our latest uh, product is what we call guest experience automation, which combines um, a unified messaging product and artificial intelligence to help hotels answer uh, guest questions that come in via, you know, via chat. You know, today we all chat. You know, mm -hmm. mm, we don't phone so much anymore. Email. Not so much today is, you know, we all WhatsApp or WeChat or Telegram or Lime, Viber, Instagram, Google messages. So they're all out there and hotels get a lot of requests. They also get contacted and Review Pro also provides, um, you know, Review Pro is a guest first um, culture. And so we also provide hotels with tools and ability to manage that interaction as well. And in terms of global footprint, what does, what does that look like? Well, Review Pro in terms of, so we have a team, Review Pro is about 110 employees globally, mm -hmm. and Barcelona is where the company was founded. Yep. It's, it's the headquarters, so we have about 80 employees in Barcelona, and then we have offices in Singapore, um, in Atlanta, and we also have people remotely, for example, working in Australia. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah. that's uh, well well appreciated by the people in Australia. Are they yeah. Australians or are they actually Europeans? They are Australians. Yeah. No, yeah. they are Australians. Okay. Yeah, yeah, working out of Brisbane. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice part of the world. It is. It is. Very good. Okay, great. So, 
coming to your, your position now as CEO, you came into the role pretty much, mm. if I'm correct, just as the crisis started. Um, yeah. So from your personal perspective, what lessons, what learnings did you take on board and, and what mm. radical changes did you have to make mm. um, during that initial process? Mm. And from that, what lessons perhaps will you take with you mm. for the next crisis? Mm. Because I'm sure there's going to be another one mm. down the road at some stage. That is correct. Um, we did plan differently uh, for 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think most people did. Yeah, we had, I had, and we had a lot of plans uh, for the company and business plans. Obviously, all of those had to be rethought. Coming into, I remember vividly. Uh, I think it was March 15 when we closed the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we knew something was coming because we also had clients in China and APEC, but. It was funny until the time it really arrived heavily in Spain, we still had a hope, at least I guess like everybody that, you know, it, it's not going to be that, it's not going to be that bad and, and you know, maybe it doesn't going to, it's not going to hit us that, that hard as yeah. it has in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and clearly we had to, uh, we had to adjust because all of a sudden what we had planned, whenever you do planning in business, you, you have some empiric data. You can look back at the history, you can look back at the decisions that was made in the past, and then from there you draw conclusions um, to move forward. Now, I have never run a business in a, in a pandemic. Yeah, so everything that you knew or learned, you know, you had to rethink, and it, were, it was a challenge mm -hmm. um, on a business level. But I think one of the things because I've been so long with the company, one of the things I wanted to do was drive some cultural change within the organization, yeah? And together, you know, I have a great executive team, you know, there was still something that, that, that we were doing, yeah? And we always wanted to put, like, the employees at the center of what we do, mm -hmm. like take care of em employees, take care of the clients, of course, the hospitality as a, as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, doing that, you know, of course, like everybody, we did business contingency plannings. We had, you know, various, you know, um, various gameplays um, at, 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 at the start. But one thing that was clear for me was, you know, yes, the company is in a crisis. Yeah, but with the acquisition of uh, Shiji, you know, um, we could finally like celebrate, you know, celebrate our success and cement, you know, our role in the industry, an industry and a field in the industry that we actually built, you mm -hmm. know, the, the there are very few companies that are as old as us, and all of those we built that part of hospitality. Mm. Yeah, and so we said, you know, I think a lot of companies did furloughs. Um, eventually, we decided to not furlough anyone. Yeah, um, one of the drivers was, you know, um, why do our employees have to to pay for something? It wasn't their fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wanted to do everything in my power to avoid, you know, furloughing. Uh, employees, because one of the things we thought of was, um, you know, try to survive today, but also how do we thrive tomorrow? Yeah, um, and what we have seen today is an exodus of talent from our industry, and it's something we wanted to avoid uh, mm. at all costs yeah. and at all means. Yeah. And so, when we provided the plan to Shiji, um, our owning uh, our owning company, uh, they were very supportive um, of the plan. And so, as as a, as a matter of fact, we didn't furlough anyone. We were able to keep our service levels for our clients up. Yeah, I think we've been uh, rewarded uh, multiple times uh, for that decision. It was a very risky decision. Yeah, and of course, we had to be more a partner than a vendor to mm. our clients. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and, and as, as everybody, we need to do give, um, you know, deferred payments, financial relief. So, I mean, there was a lot of stays and was a lot of stress on Review Pro as well. But at the same time, we also were able to increase revenues. We were able to increase revenues of our existing clients. We won fantastic new clients, yeah, over the course of uh, the pandemic that decided for Review Pro for, um, for various reasons. Um, but as, again, as a whole, as a company, you know, the executive team took a pay cut last year. You know, as, as a sign also to the organization, you know, like we, we want to make this work, you know, we all have to do some sacrifice, you know, we're not going to get out whole or the other being whole, any of us, yeah, on one or um, the other level. 
and so the executive team, a great team behind me, their teams behind them. And so to your question, being ready for another pandemic, it also allowed us to build a very agile workforce. And you know, prior to this, you know, we were used to work 100% from the office. Yeah, and today, we, you know, we, do, we have a fantastic office here, as you can see, mm. but um, we have people working from all over, you know, we have people from Barcelona, we have people that are in Barcelona, but they spend periods of time in other places. You know, Review Pro has about 26 different nationalities. So you can imagine during a crisis, we have uh, single moms in the executive team, we have single moms, we have uh, individuals, young people living in flat shares, uh, families, kids don't go to school. So we have a, a lot of diverse, um, it's a very diverse company. And so of course we needed to make sure that everyone's okay. I mean, we went even to the lengths to, you know, we had very young people in our sales team, uh, in the biz dev team, we had to buy them, you know, desks and chairs because we were in flat shares, they only had a bed. Yeah, so we had to, um, so the company went out there and they made sure that we all as a, as a unit go in as a, as, a, as a team and we come out as a team. And it sparked a tremendous uh, willingness from everybody to chip in. Um, we had, we were cross departmental, so people on the sales team all of a sudden were in product, were in account management, were in, in finance to go there and help where help was needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and it was very, you know, it was very motivational and probably one of the, you know, the proudest moments in my career to see how um, as a team, you know, everybody came together to make sure, okay, yes, we can do it. Yeah. And even though right now, you know, the hotels are closed, the situation is very, very grim. We still believe that there is a, at some point there is, um, you know, an end to it. Yeah. Yeah. And we will see that we'll get out of it. And so... We're going back to normality right now. Mm. We, in fact, have uh, increased you know, our headcount and everything by you know by 20% over the last uh, couple of months because we're getting ready to thrive again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, so with Shi Chi Helps, we were able to build new technology, new product, um, and like I said, guest experience automation um, was planned before the pandemic to help. Um, with operational excellence at a very uh, cost-effective um, uh, level to automate many of those routine processes within hotels. Questions, when is check-in, check-out, how do I get to the airport, um, uh, can I get room service, can I get another pillow, you know, things where you don't really generate a lot of, you know, guest satisfaction. This is something that is expected. Mm -hmm. And now hotels can actually deliver this. And we know today that there is a staffing issue in hotels, when I speak to CEOs of chain of hotels, they're in the middle of doing housekeeping. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was at the hotel in London. Um, it was for a weekend. It was for a private um, a private trip. Uh, the hotel had like eighty percent occupancy, but the bar shut at half nine. Mm. Yeah. And it was a was a bit of a surprise. Was that because there was no staff, or was that because of COVID regulations? Because there was no staff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my point. Yeah. That is my point, and so we need to help, and that's one of the things we do, we need to help the hoteliers who in fact, um, over the last, I think, two years, have shown a lot of, uh, you know, a spirit of innovation. Yeah, I think we need to give them credit because they did. Um, sometimes, you know, we talk about the speed of innovation and hospitality, and, and but I think during COVID, a lot of hoteliers uh, did definitely step up, and, and I think we need to give credit back there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. No, I certainly recognize the fact that from a staffing perspective, everyone oh, from an operational level is feeling that pinch at the moment. And I think where technologies can, can be apply, applied to help automate any of those processes where it's practical and it makes sense, then that should definitely be the case. One thing I did want to check with you on as well was um, 
you said earlier that you saw actually an increase of customers during the the, the crisis per se. Yeah. Were they people that were or hotels that were considering their tech stack overall as a as a as a review as a whole, or were they just looking to fill perhaps gaps for the, for the types of solutions that you offer? Um, because from yeah. from my perspective, I think this crisis would have been an ideal time for hotels to completely do a, 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 an audit of what they have in terms yeah. of technology and perhaps just wipe out any old proprietary solutions and bring in yeah. fresh, new, open, cloud-based solutions. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a mix. It definitely is, is that there was time, yeah? Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of colleagues um, leave, furloughed is on, on, yes. on corporate levels. Yeah. Yeah. Many departments over time have, you know, literally been completely replaced or eliminated. Um, speaking until you know, still today. Mm. Yeah. Um, but Review Pro is in the market, you know, for such a long time. So we are known for our products. We're known for what we do. But as business goes, when new technology gets implemented, and especially, you know, we have clients. We train 10, 15, 20,000 people. So when you change the solution on that scale, it mainly is very costly. Yeah, it's a big process. It's a big process. Mm. And so I think, but this time also gave time to the organizations to really, like you say, um, look at the value. Because change faces always resistance. And as, as if you want to facilitate change, you, are, you need to make sure that whatever they're losing, they're not losing anything with the change, and the net gain needs to overcome that energy of resistance. Mm. Yeah, and you need time to to work on it because um, many times review pros approach is always we focus on you know providing hoteliers with solutions and a platform to generate and create great great guest experiences. Yeah, whatever we do is about the guest and the guest experience. And we don't branch out into other, you know, into other parts of the industry. It's sometimes it's, it seems very uh, interesting, but we always go back to our core company. That's why we go very deep in, in, in what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so while on the surface, many companies do what we do, um, for on, on an enterprise level, on an independent hotel level, for different segments, uh, service apartment, luxury, business travel, um, our solution always provides the, the largest depth in in and in, in, in value that we provide to the hotels, and it takes time to to realize and to understand this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can you know you know it's public knowledge. You know, we we brought on board companies like Banyan Tree, Frases. Um, Archipelago, a, a big group out of uh, Indonesia. out of Indonesia, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 they all have said, you know, we've been in touch with you for a long time, but now also we have time to really, you know, look at the tech stack, um, you know, security, uh, where are your platforms, where are your data centers, right, and you know, the package is is, and being integrated vertically, you know, without boundaries. I think that just uh, makes a very compelling story for clients, and they've seen it. We, truth be told, we have lost clients. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, by stopping contracts. It's not that they um, move to others, but it's, you know, um, some hotels don't even exist anymore. They yeah. change completely. You know, they 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 move to like more like an apartment space type business. So, um, but I, you know, I'm happy to say that. None of our clients really moved away because you know there was any issue with service um, or with product, which was one of the um, you know even in a crisis you can find something positive and helping our clients building their trust and that loyalty um, with our uh, prospects and our clients was a big big uh, goal throughout the last uh, throughout the last two years. Okay, excellent. I'd like to talk about now. Um 
the, our industry as a whole, when it comes to adopting new solutions and new technologies, mm. historically, and I, 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 we talk about it a lot, and some people probably roll their eyes when I bring it up all the time, but it's it's an important topic, and I think the the crisis has been a, an ideal opportunity for yeah. change. Um, <clears throat> we've seen other industries such as retail sure. and 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 fintech adopt to um, and open airlines. solutions, airlines as well, open solutions that are non-proprietary, hmm. that, that integrate easily with each other. And yet we, as an industry, we still seem, we have solutions in the market that offer yeah. those, those possibilities now. But yet for some reason we still seem to be lagging. I'd like to try to get from your perspective, why do you feel that, what, what's the stop, what's stopping our industry from moving forward okay. in that perspective? And, and wh why, are, why are we unable to move at, at greater speed for okay. that change? So first of all, I think let's, okay, I think we all can acknowledge that. I think historically that is correct. And also for me because I have, my, my hospitality background is limited to review pro so I'm for example like, yeah, I think you grew up in a hotel and I did and, yes. and, and <laughs> I heard the story so it's a fantastic thing so I did not yeah so I come from other industries that are actually very fast-paced you mm -hmm. know and, and, and adoption is high and speed is high and time to market is high and you have to do it because otherwise you just are gonna be left behind now but in hospitality, you know, yes, there was a slow pace and, you know, but there are reasons, you know, for all of this, you know, and I think there is, there, there are many stakeholders that need to take ownership um, for it, right? And I think, let's talk about some of those stakeholders. I think in general, um, you know, the fragmentation on the tech side, you talked about open um, um, API architecture, and how you know tech vendors collaborate together. Mm. Yeah, Review Pro is a very open architecture, and we develop integrations. And if we develop them, we usually we do not charge. You know, there's a few exceptions where there's a price more with a, 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 a separate vendor that enforces this. But Review Pro, we believe in generating value, and as 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 our as the integrations grow, the adoption level grows, mm. and for a SaaS provider what you need is that um, your clients are using your product. Right. Yeah. So if we can foster this, we're more than happy. We have a dedicated team uh, just focusing on integrations for the various product lines. And we've done integrations in the past and we completed them technically, but some of them have never seen the light of day. Why? Because then there was a price uh, stamp put on it or um, it was stopped for some other, you know, for other commercial reasons, you know? So I think, Clearly, the vendors in itself um, need to look at themselves and to see, you know, do they look from a um, from a from a from a revenue standpoint and at the those integration? They look for, you know, how can we create value for our clients? Um, and and from a review pro standpoint, um, you know, we have a business model, yeah, clearly. But the API, I think, a huge amount of um, plus seventy percent of all our clients have the API because it's one of the things that we advocate for. Yeah, we have a development platform. You go to developers.reviewpro.com. You can test our endpoints. You can read documentation. If you want to have uh, access to a test account, we give you, uh, you know, we give you a secret. We give you a key, and you can basically play around with, uh, you know, with our data. Yeah. So we have an open backend, and also we develop against, you know, other open backends. And more and more vendors um, do this yes. now. But in order to drive this, there needs to be you know, it needs two sides, or at least two sides, uh, to make that happen. And it needs a strong uh, vision within, from a, coming from the hoteliers, yeah, um, uh, or from the accommodation providers. Yeah, it's not only hotels; there are others also at play. So, and there are um, a good amount of fairly advanced uh, um, hospitality organizations out there. They, they have also then the who believe in the technology vision, but then they also have the staff to it. Yeah, and um, for example, today, like we spoke before, you know, even the CEO is doing housekeeping. Um, even though staffing is very limited, over the last couple of months and maybe the last two years, we've seen actually hotels 
uh, innovating at light speed. You know, mm -hmm. I want to say comparatively, we say slow pace um, before COVID, during mm -hmm. COVID, mm -hmm. we were forced to do it and the hotels were forced to do it yeah. and the, the tech providers were forced to do it. And all of a sudden it was actually working. Yeah, it, yeah. but wasn't that refreshing to see? It was amazing. It was proof that it's possible. And, and you can see all of a sudden hotels, they use BI tools, new reporting. Mm. You know, we created, you know, boot camps. We consulted with clients. We optimized what they were using, you know, even while they were closed. Mm. Yeah, and so um, I think there is a change and, you know, I don't want to say new normal, but there is a change. And I think, again, we need to give credit back where credit is deserved. And I think hoteliers clearly, you know, it's not that they didn't know, but as we all know, um, hospitality, one of the things I realized when I started is a very fragmented uh, industry with a lot of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's not that easy to take a decision and, and, and you know, brand, franchise, owners. Um, so there's a lot of people that need to be convinced. And sometimes this is holding back. And, you know, the pandemic also has forced us, you know, not to look back to take decisions for the future. No, no, we needed to look at the data that we have today and sometimes just make a, an educated guess. Mm. Yeah, so I think there is a good pace today, I agree. It needs to be more, and it needs to, and it needs to continue. But um, we have a lot of industry friends. I think they share the same, um, you know, they, they share the same philosophy. They're still legacy providers. You know, they come with an old uh, uh, set of beliefs. But you know, like eventually, um, also fueled by the pandemic. Um, I'm fairly convinced that this is going to change, and they have to change as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about data. I know we've we, we mentioned it earlier, but I would like to drill down a, a little bit on it yeah. by asking, you know, obviously you're a part of Shiji now, mm. and I, I know Shiji yeah. uh, is quite an advocate for yes. uh, open data standards. You guys are certainly supporting that process. Yes. Um, but it would appear that a lot of hotel organizations are struggling to have a handle on how to effectively collect and store their own data. Yeah. That seems to be a common theme, yeah. um, even at the higher levels of our industry. Um, so the challenges that they also get from that is putting in actions um, of, of, of creating and working with single guest profiles. Because single guest mm -hmm. profiles is, a, is um, I yeah, think, yeah. Um, a, a very big deal uh, for anyone that wants to manage their data. Yeah. So who, in your opinion, should take the lead on this particular piece? Should it be the hotelier, the operator, or actually the vendors, such as a PMS or a CRS? Or should it actually somehow be a, a meshing of both? So there is a lot of data out there, first of all. Mm. Yeah, and everybody collects... Um, a lot of data out there. There needs to be, I think, there needs to be a single sort of truth, you know. So it's got to be um, in an organization, you've got to have one leading, you know, one leading, you know, database. Let's just call it that. It could be a, a CRM system, it could be a PMS, it could be a CRS system, it could be any kind of system. But it's got to be one single uh, sy system to lead it. And so, and you need, um, you need two players. Um, you need, on the one hand, you need the hotels with a strong drive and project management to get there. And you need to select the, the right partner and the right technology to actually that enables you um, to do so. But it's got to be a partner that has such, um, um, such level of open integration at their core of their business. You know, it can't be we, uh, like a project. It can't be like a, a project because if you want to continue to innovate, you need to find somebody that in, within their standard product, you know, has it as its core value. Yeah, because if I'm a proprietary system and I just develop on, um, you know, on, on custom project any, any integrations, um, your integration will fall behind because I'm not going to focus on it. Yeah, so, and if you provide backends that are open, and you develop yourself on your own APIs. You know, we consume our own APIs, APIs that we um, uh, readily make available um, online. It's not 100%, but it's very close. Yeah, and if any endpoints are missing, we're happily uh, to look at how can we publi uh, publish those. You know, sometimes there are um, um, privacy uh, rules and regulations, data sovereignty that we need to mm. uh, consider, mm. yeah. But, um, 
And when it comes to, then it comes to about to you know sharing data. You know how can we share data amongst the different systems? And so, Review Pro not as much is is a leading is a leading database, but we can enrich uh, guest profiles to a level that allows then the leading uh, databases to segment and customize because we know every interaction the guest had with the hotel, you know, during the stay, prior to the stay, during the stay, and also post stay. So we know um, they had an interaction with an FMB, was this good or was it bad? You know, and based on that decision, you know, we're, you know a PMS or a CRM system can take certain action if it is a repeat guest. In the marketing side of things, if it is a guest that comes from proximity, if it comes from afar. So we have that data. We don't see ourselves as a leading database, but for example, you know, um, um, you know, Shichi Enterprise Platform yeah. is, like you say, is an open uh, technology stack, and we feed into data that. into yeah. into the Shichi Enterprise Platform. Yeah. We receive data yeah. for uh, transacting what we have to do on our end. Yeah, and we integrate with other PMS systems, and you know we've done um, various integrations on on that end. Yeah, but that's what I say. You 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 know, um, you take a hotelier that has a strong driver to do so, and a vision, and and and, and the knowledge and the capability, and you take a uh, a technology provider that really wants to drive that same direction. That can be uh, that can be very beneficial. Mm. Yeah, and it doesn't generate friction. Yeah, because you only get innovation if there's if it's, if it's frictionless. Yeah, if what I do for my clients is in my own best purpose and good for all of my other clients. Yeah, um, Review Pro, we have not charged any any euro or hardly anything for customizations. We charge for reporting, but um, when it comes to customization, we customize and we give it back to all our clients because we innovate. Uh, and build great products alongside our great clients. Yeah, and um, the brain trust that we receive from our clients, we make sure we share it. Yeah, we call it a positive network effect. The more clients we work with, the more inputs we get. Um, you know, it's always like you said, like um, 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 clients influence anything, but they don't decide anything. You know, but they influence every decision that we take. And you know, in the end, they give us their trust, and uh, we take those decisions to allow them. Uh, to share data, store them, and use them, you know, to the best, uh, you know, to the best benefit. If we take the theme of next generation of guest intelligence solutions for hotels, could you explain for the viewers what your definition of that is? So, I think guest intelligence is 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 measuring the guest experience, you know, along you know along the the guest journey. Yeah, and so 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 I mean, guest intelligence. Um, starts very early with the with the looking phase and the, you know um, before we're talking about operational excellence because it doesn't really help you to have a full hotel if on Monday you have like 50 reviews with one star mm -hmm. yeah in 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 in, the, in a short term and mid long term you know you know you need to satisfy let's satisfy those guests whoever you get as 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 a staying guest. You need to satisfy them because every staying guest is an advocate or not. Yeah, it could be a distractor, could be a promoter, and so and so. Next gen for us is, you know, there's vast amounts of data, yeah, that are that's already readily there. Then you have the ability to tap into data that you know, like uh, with an in-stay survey, uh, with the whole messaging stack of communication you can have and the automation to it. To us. This is next gen, you know. This is next gen guest intelligence because it also includes a more proactive role uh, from the guests. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, you know, during the pandemic, you know, free cancellations. Hotel had you know um, full books, and the next thing is quarantine and on your return, and then they lose half their or eighty percent of their bookings. You mm -hmm. know, especially in Spain, you know, with all travelers from the UK, you know, this was an uh, this was an up and down, and so. For hotels to be able to also communicate, because we cannot only answer incoming um, questions from travelers, we can also proactively start communicating on um, messaging channels with uh, you know with guests that have booked with the hotels, mm -hmm. and to try and to you know many times um, guests book multiple hotels for the same uh, for the same duration. So you need to um, bring 
that loyalty in already there and and that contact that makes that to, that guest really you know at the end come to you know come to stay with you and so um, in guest intelligence, you know, review pro, we try to be best of breed. This is this is our core focus. We want to be the best. We're not we're not in in a, in, a, in a CRM space. We're not in a PMS space. We only focus on um, you know guest feedback and and guest interactions and and the management and the analysis of it. So, what would you say is your sweet spot in the market then? To uh, to have an all integrated platform along the guest journey. Yeah, because um, no silos, um, no friction points, um, information flows fro uh, freely within uh, the application. So we know um, if you ask for a towel, we know if you had a great experience at the restaurant, we know um, maybe you saw some good reviews or negative reviews on on a website, you know, and, and during your decision making process, and then, you know, at the end of the process, uh, we realize it was good or it was uh, it, it was negative. And to me, you know, when it comes to next gen, that really um, I think is at the heart of generating a remarkable, you know, guest experience to know to know it. And the platform is very descriptive. Yeah, we do, you know, impact analysis. What impacts your guest satisfaction? You know, we have the Global Review Index, you know, has been analyzed by Cornell University and, and, and others. You know, it has a real impact on hotel performance and their financial KPIs. Yeah, and, um, you know, using ReviewPro, you have, you have a, a way, uh, when GMs come in, they always say, okay, so what do I have to do? What do I have to do to increase my guest satisfaction? And uh, the platform, in a very um, um, user-friendly way, and with the help of a fantastic customer success team, you know, we help hotels to be self-sufficient. You know, they don't have to come to us and ask us every single question or tell us. You know, it's not a consulting job. It's we are enabling the hotels to actually, you know, self-serve and be much quicker and much closer um, um, to the guests, and you know, um, to provide a really an excellent service there. In your opinion, what's the definition of a smart hotelier? Well, uh, first of all, somebody who uses the Review Pro platform. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it's a penalty, you put the ball on the spot, you know, you, yep. you, you kick it. Yeah. Um, well, I think there is no, there is no, one, um, there is no one definition. Obviously, from a Review Pro standpoint, um, using data to understand your guest and then use the insights to react to it and use it continuously to improve your service. Yeah, There's, there are great hospitality professionals out there, but nobody knows everything. Mm. And if anything, we can confirm or we can highlight or we can show trends. And so I think the smart hotelier is a data-driven hotelier. Yeah, must be a data-driven hotelier. And so, um, you know, it was what you said, like open technologies, integration, single source of truth, and bringing all of this together into a a one of uh, form or another into an intelligence, I think that would constitute a smart hotelier. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot more to it, but yeah. I think that would be my answer. Okay, for great. And just from a personal perspective now, what, mm -hmm. uh, what's been one of your most memorable travel experiences? Yeah, there's a few, but I like to travel in Africa, mm -hmm. I have to say. I, I, I um, so yeah, I think. A few years back, um, I was traveling with my wife, um, just the two of us in, in Botswana, mm -hmm. and I definitely can recommend that, you know, with a, uh, with a pickup truck, a tent on the roof, and wow. like, you know, sleeping there in, in wild parks with wild animals, you know, oh. it definitely is, and that's is an experience. Like that, because like, there must be lions and, well, and man-eating animals. you shouldn't go to the <laughs> toilet at night, let me say that, because it's not fenced. Yeah, wow, it's not okay. fence that's, whatsoever. That's pretty brave, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you wake up in the morning and then you see all the tracks around it and you say to um, you know one of the people that, that that pay attention there to the park and they say, oh, what is oh, what this was the lion, you know, this was the hyena. Wow. And um, so yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing and it um, it's not something that is genuinely made for tourists is something you can make a holiday but you can still experience uh, the country and the people so it's very um sounds amazing yeah, yeah. it is 
Amazing. Okay, great. And finally, what's your favourite food and even restaurant if you can nail one down? Uh, I don't think, I don't think I can nail one down, but, you know, since I, I live so far away from Germany and for so many years, yeah, when I go back to um, my little home village, yeah, um, we still have little wineries, they sell mm -hmm. their own produce mm -hmm. and they may be open a couple of days a, a month, a couple of weeks a year. And when I go back, I always, uh, I always make sure I go visit them and uh, enjoy some, um, some very local, authentic, uh, authentic food there. Fantastic. Sounds lovely. Well, Michael, thanks so much for joining well, thanks us. thanks for it's having great me. great to have you on the show. Thank thanks you. a lot. And thank you for watching. I hope you found that informative and, and helpful. And uh, we look forward to coming back to you again with our next interview and maybe even again from Barcelona sometime. Um, but until then, it's bye for now. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and uh, download our app and you can watch all of this content offline on our app as well. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Hi. Michael. Thanks. Very good. Thank you.